Entry level mining information. Welcome to Australian Mining for New Starters. And in today's information session, we're going to talk about what's driving demand throughout the industry. So to start with, we'll have a look at copper and nickel. So the copper price is over $11,625 Australian when you convert it. And the nickel price is at $20,808 when you convert it. Now, what's driving demand in nickel and copper is the same thing. It's the electric cars and the batteries. So much so that Tesla has identified that nickel is in short supply. So they've partnered with a nickel mine to try and get their shore up their supply. Now, the reason that uh, everybody's chasing nickel at the moment is because the Chinese are back into full swing with um, domest what they call domestic circulation. So they're making stuff for their own people to buy. And that's this cheap budget electric car that they're rolling out. And they're using a lot of the commodities around the world. And that's why everything's up is because they're making lots of this. So just keep in mind when we talk about the iron ore price and everything else that we talk about, that the big thing that's driving all these commodities at the moment is the fact that you need to use them for the electric cars and the batteries that they're going to put in everything. So that's nickel and copper. Gold is still on the way up. Um, it's dropped down a little bit like we talked about last week, but it's still a good price at $2,253. Everybody's still making lots of money. Now, why has the gold price gone up significantly in the last 12 to 18 months? The main reason is because the world, the reserve banks around the world have made it a tier one asset again. So physical gold that they keep in their vaults has become money again. And that happened on the 29th of March in 2019. And all all the reserve banks for most countries around the world have all been buying gold in large amounts ever since. So that's something to think about. And one little thing that you should realize is that it doesn't include the paper that people buy on the stock exchange. So you need the gold in your hand for it to be a tier one asset. But that's what's driving gold. And we move on to iron ore. Like I said before, the, the price is high. The reason the price is high is because the Chinese are making lots of things. Now, the other reason the price is high is because of Vale's weaker production. Now, whenever anybody says Vale, what they're really talking about is Brazil, because that's the big um, company in Brazil that produces all the iron ore, like our big three, BHP, uh, Rio Tinto and Fortescue. Vale's the only player or the real big player in Brazil, and their production's been down for various reasons over the last uh, two years and that's what's underpinning the price and like I said last week the reason that these prices are so high isn't because they're stockpiling it the reason it is is because they're making stuff like those electric cars and they need the materials to make it and it's not just China that's doing this India is doing it as well there's lots of African countries that are um, lifting their own internal production and they're using steel and copper and all those wonderful commodities to do it now, lastly, coal. Coal is at eighty-eight dollars uh, Australian a ton, and this for the, the demand for coal should be good around the world, with um, lots of countries opening up new coal-fired power stations. But when you put coal-fired power stations into Google and you ask about it, you don't really get a good indication of how many countries are actually opening them up. You get an article that reads more like a political football than anything else. And that's one of the problems with coal in Australia. It's become a political football. So when I talk to people about getting into coal, what I ask them, or first off, if you know somebody that's in the mine, go for it. If you could, if you just live down the road and your dad or your mum or your sister or your auntie or whoever is working at the mine and they can help you get in, go for it. But if you're sitting in Sydney or Brisbane and you're thinking that, you know, maybe I'm going to try and get into coal, just think about what's happening at the moment with everything, with all the people trying to stop the Adani project and the Queensland government stopping other projects that really should be going ahead, but they're getting stopped for political reason. So if you do get into a, onto a coal mine, how long is your career going to last for? Whereas if you get onto a nickel or a copper mine or a gold mine, all those things are going to go for a long time. And you can have a look um, at the job ads. If you type underground in, you'll see all the jobs come up. And this is a good example, entry level at Olympic Dam. And Olympic Dam do uranium, gold, um, and copper. That's a really big copper mine there at Olympic Dam. 
and they're looking for people all over the country. Now, if you want to try and get into Hard Rock Underground, then I suggest you have a look at the sponsor's intro to underground mining courses that they do. Their DIY package is really good. Uh, lots of people have made it work for them. If you come over and have a look in the courses, you'll see the Wall of Fame page and you can have a read of what people have said that have done the course and you can see which courses they've done to get the jobs and basically what it comes down to and everybody says that the reason that they got the job was because they were able to answer the mining questions in the interview because the course taught them how the mine works and what they're going to be expected to do as a nipper a truck driver or a member of service crew so if we have a look at our map you can see where all the gold mines are around the country these are the areas to target and if you um, live in a hub like Perth or Adelaide or Brisbane then you can get fly and fly out New South Wales doesn't do the hub they do drive in drive out so you'll need to probably think about relocating but like I said before if you know if you're thinking about getting into mining then I really have a look at steering clear of the coal and iron ore iron ore as we talked about last week are going are in the process of replacing the majority of their truck drivers so that's not a good long-term career either one of the only well, the best places for the long-term careers are in the hard rock mines. so your gold nickel and copper so I hope that information helps. And if you've got any questions, uh, just send them through and I will answer them. And um, if you could share this information around and like and subscribe uh, the channel. Thanks.